Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Podcast Pasta. That's a podcast that's like pasta, not the podcast that's about pasta. As always, I'm your host, Mike, and today I am joined with Nina Hope. Uh, on your profile, you describe yourself as a nerdcore content creator. You do original music. You do um, art. I believe you also stream. Uh, Nina, how are you today? Uh, hi, I'm really good. Um, I'm really excited to finally do this it's been a while since uh we started planning it so i'm really excited yeah and uh once again it's great to have you on the show um i don't know if you listen to other interviews uh, my guests are probably sick to death of uh <laughs> me asking this but uh my go-to first question is i know i gave you a very brief introduction but i guess if you kind of want to expand on that a little bit and explain like in your own words, what you do and what motivates the content that you create? Um, okay, well, I would say that first and foremost, uh, I am a nerdcore singer as of now. Um, I primarily started creating my podcast. I think that was like two years ago. Yeah, I think it was in 2021 that I started. Uh, I do a nerdy podcast. It's basically everything pop culture that comes to mind. I haven't touched it in a while because of university, but I'm revisiting it. It's getting a rebrand and everything. Um, I do interviews with nerdcore artists. But as of now, I uh, kind of just try to focus on music, creating my own music. And then in my free time, I kind of um, write a little bit of just like you know my own kind of um stories and delusions etc right right and um i guess uh what i always like to do with this show is um for a lot of guests because i don't know um I, again i always struggle doing this with streamers because i you know with streamers i feel like they're more personable with um their audience and granted i don't know how often you necessarily stream yourself mm -hmm. or if it's all just strictly like you know just the music and stuff but mm -hmm. i'm curious about like i guess connecting your story to like content creation so um before you got into doing like this music or you know getting into like nerdcore content creation like mm -hmm. did you go into school studying like media and content creation or mm -hmm. i guess what's your background before you got into um doing what you do right right so um just to kind of circle back to the first point you mentioned i do stream a little bit uh couldn't stream too much uh because i was living at the dorms but currently i am moving out to my own place so i will be streaming much more probably um that being said, if like when it comes to me as a, as an artist uh, in general, it kind of started like way back, um, especially with music. I started singing when I was like seven years old, I believe. Um, I took singing classes since very young. Um, I took piano classes, um, and I did also take uh, some multi multimedia classes for a few years. Um, but that wasn't really that big of a big of a deal for me, I suppose. Um, I took very many classes, acting classes, art classes, just too many classes. Um, but I kind of come from like a family of very like artistic people. Um, my mom always tried to introduce us to like theater and music. And so my brother, um, he started studying at like an art school and then um, he went to a university where he also studied um, theater and art and now he works uh, on like a national level in uh, like the theater scene and so it kind of was always very natural for me to also go this route but for a while I didn't really um, I didn't really feel like I had what it takes right so it it feels very difficult for um, a person, especially from like a really small country, uh, such as uh, Slovakia is. It feels really difficult to um, imagine yourself having any sort of success or any sort of audience uh, when you, you know, start getting into doing music uh, publicly. Um, 
but I kind of just like, you know, got sick of um, trying to do the practical thing or the thing that, you know, the capitalist society tries to make you do. And I just told myself, you know, just screw it. <laughs> let's, let's just do something that you actually love. So would you consider this more of like strictly a passion project like for you or do you see this as like a, a career for yourself? Because I know like, um, I forgot what like the principles call, but like kind of how when you turn something that you like as a hobby into something that's mm. more of a career, I know it can like kind of deter people in terms of like their motivation to continue. Right. So, and granted, I don't know how far out you've thought in terms of, doing what you do but like do you see this as like a full career for yourself i mean eventually i would love to i still have like a long way to go just because i started doing music the way i do it now just a while ago so there's like a lot for me to learn and i'm very excited to do so um but i feel like i need to dedicate myself more to music in order for it to uh, become a full-time thing um, but I would love to um, I would also love to become a full-time writer if that was you know on the table but again um, it requires time that due to studies I didn't really have uh, which now might you know expand a little bit which would be great um, I do think ahead quite a bit uh, but I try not to with this just because it it I really Put a lot of pressure on myself then and that's when music becomes not fun you know when you look too much at like the numbers and how your stuff is performing instead of doing it for actual fun so i feel like it's really about the mindset so if you if you actually um do something that you're passionate about just because you're passionate about it and not because you're uh, expecting a reaction out of out of anyone. Uh, that's when I think you don't really have to be worried about it deterring you from anything as it becomes your full time job. Um, one of the reasons why I was kind of drawn a bit to like your, your work in general is uh, the fact that you use your mo the moniker as like nerdcore, and um, one of the previous guests that I had on. Uh, Maya Ben David did mm -hmm. a video essay discussing, you know, this whole sociological phenomenon of like ascribing certain hobbies or certain like aesthetic styles as like, you know, a blank core, right? So, in the right. context of her video, she did like cottage core. I've talked about sleaze core myself. Um, nerd core is actually a new one for me. So, I guess, uh, for if you can enlighten my audience, if you will, right? Um, I guess, at least to you, what is Nerdcore? So, with Nerdcore, it's a little tricky because it's not in any way related to stuff like Cottagecore, for example. Uh, it kind of just tries to encapsulate different communities. In this case, it is uh, mostly focused on um, music that is... Um, focused on either anime or games or really any other pop culture uh, topics. It could be books, TV shows. Uh, I recently made a song that was about the webtoon. So it really can be anything uh, as long as it kind of portrays to that, you know, nerdy side of, of humanity, I suppose. And Nerdcore kind of just um, groups together all the people who either engage in making this sort of content um, or just, you know, enjoy um, enjoy watching or listening to this kind of stuff. Um, so it doesn't really have to do too much with, like, aesthetic or anything. It's really just about the feeling of community. Right, although I have seen, like, the, like it, it, it also branch out into, like, fashion and other aspects of, like, you know, a general, like, core culture which kind of um i guess kind of ties into my next question as to um why why you feel the need to well not feel the need to that's like a terrible way of phrasing it but <laughs> um 
why you connect yourself specifically to nerdcore culture as opposed to just saying, oh, I'm into, you know, like, nerdy music or, or, or you know, just, like, nerdy hobbies, I guess, if that right. makes sense. Like, um, yeah. Yeah, no, I get that. Um, when it comes to fashion specifically, I would say I, I personally haven't seen... Uh, like anything super inspired by nerdcore, I would not be surprised if it was anything like if it was like streetwear or something. Mostly because uh, nerdcore, as a mm, as many people like to call it, as a music genre, uh, was mainly founded on hip hop music and hip hop culture. So I would not be surprised. But many people usually just imagine stuff like cosplays, etc., um, which. I wouldn't say is excluded, but I wouldn't also say that it's necessary um, for for the community. Um, why I um, like to think of myself as a part of Nerdcore, mostly probably just because of the community. I found the community in, I think, 2020 is when I started listening actively to nerdcore music, which is actually quite late. It was like very much the boom of nerdcore music online. Um, I should probably um, specify that uh, the nerdcore scene mostly takes over YouTube and then just like other social media, such as, you know, Twitter or Instagram, etc. Um, but I kind of just like, you know, uh, became aware in like 2020 and it very quickly became uh became obvious to me that there is a very strong sense of community of the people who work together and as a person who was very interested in like um anime and books and games for my entire life and was made fun of it uh because of this um it kind of felt very it kind of felt very um, beautiful to find someone who is actually interested in the same things and who does it so passionately, you know? So kind of, I just really wanted to become a part of something bigger than myself, if that makes any sense. Um, I wouldn't say there is necessarily a need for me to call myself anything. Uh, it's more just that I like to be recognized as a part of that community that was already pre-existing to, to my knowledge. No, I get that. Yeah, that I, I definitely like um, kind of uh, uh, empathize. I, I don't know if that's the right word, but um, you know that it is nice to have like a community of creators or be a part of like a larger community of creators because you know I, I honestly with what i do i feel more like a nomad where i just like kind of interweave myself into different communities but like because there's no unified like podcasting group. Oh, like yeah. not really in the sense of you know there's like different pockets but um i guess i am kind of well, um, you might. I don't. I don't know if you'll be more knowledgeable about this than me, because uh, I'm. I'm always kind of curious about like because nerdcore is actually like a growing genre, right? I think like my first like exposure through just like general osmosis is um, what's his name? I think Game Boy Jones or something oh, yeah. like that. Oh um, yeah, Shout I'm out not Game sure Boy. if you've heard of. We love it. Him. Uh, and like to me, it, it seems like it's kind of this offshoot of like, not to reveal my age too much, but like of like old school AMVs, like anime music mm. videos, where it's like you know oh, song yeah. put to like uh, anime music. Sometimes it's like new metal. Sometimes it's like hip hop. Um, am I right in that assessment, or is there like some secret aspect to its origin that I'm not really necessarily aware of myself? I would say there are people who are from the community who are much more knowledgeable on this than me. Um, but I would say for like the anime part of the community, I would say it definitely very much stems from like the AMV culture. Um, and just like the entire presence of an artist on YouTube, I would say is very 
dependent also on just like the AMV aspect. Uh, many people don't realize how very important uh, the video is for a music artist on YouTube if you work in Nerdcore, just because your AMV is uh, very often what gets the people to find um, what you what you made in the first place. Of course, with also the different names and algorithm and everything, it kind of just works in very mysterious ways. Um, but I would say that very much it stems also from just like the AMV uh, side of side of anime in in general. Um, unfortunately, before doing this uh, call, I wasn't able to, because I generally like to kind of look at like the analytics of people that I bring on, but unfortunately, right. um, I wasn't able to fully look at yours. So I guess while I have you here, um, what, what, what song of yours that you've done has been like your biggest yet? The biggest song is definitely, um what is called favorite song so just not to you know get it mixed up um i'm gonna just quickly actually pull it up just to see because i'm not sure how much how much views it has right now uh it's on 5.5.1k on youtube and i believe it's nearing like six or seven I'm not sure now k okay, on spotify um which is really funny because it was one of, I, I think it was my second song to ever release. Uh, it was done uh, very much thanks to and with uh, Jonald. I don't know if you know him. Um, he was very kind to me. Uh, he featured on the song and he also mixed and mastered it, which really gave it, um, I think, the, the oomph that actually made people, you know, to listen to it. Um, also, I think what helped is just that it was about Sword Art Online, uh, which I feel like many people do look for on YouTube for some reason, because while my other songs still perform quite well, none has performed as well as this one, um, ever. Um, on Spotify, it kind of gets close now with, uh, one of my latest songs that came out. Uh, so it's kind of uh, nearing the same um, same uh, stream count. Um, but this one is definitely at the top of the list for many people. Mm. Um, I, shoot, I forgot what I was going to ask. Um, oh, it happens right. I'm no, no, I got it. I got it. Uh, so like with a lot of creators that i talk to like um let me say for example like video essays like oftentimes it's like not only directly collaborative but there's also behind the scenes of like they work with like an editor to help them or like scripts you know script consultants and you know mm. things like that uh i guess for your videos like what specifically do you do with them is it just the singing or do you also do like the video editing in terms of like the visuals accompanying the song or is it right. like kind of a mix of both? So um, personally, I don't work with uh, video editing much just because I didn't have time. I did take some classes on it, but I just, I wasn't able to. Uh, I did the video for um, favorite song, but it's just very, very, very simple lyrics video because I did it in quarantine. I was... Uh, I was sick with COVID, so it was the best I could do at the moment. Um, but for my latest videos, I just work with different video editors. Sometimes there's more of them working on one project. Um, I would like to eventually uh, find someone who I could um, pay to do all my videos. Um, unfortunately, um, my situation does not quite allow it just yet. But I am hoping we will get there uh, sometimes, maybe later this year or early next year. Um, there's a lot of people working on a song, um, always, uh, especially when you are um, as busy as I usually am, uh, because I because I picked up making music uh, very late. 
Uh, I it was just like I was just starting university. I didn't really have time to learn all the things that people who have been committed already know, such as music production, mixing and mastering, etc. And I'm very excited to finally learn it now that I'm going to be out of university uh, because I have to have a specific person for production, specific person for post-production, spe specific person for the video, for the thumbnail, although I try to do the thumbnail myself most of the time, but still. Um, it gets kind of overwhelming having so many people working on one thing. I would like to get to a point where I could create a song by myself completely from scratch with nobody's help. Um, I think it's gonna take a while, but I would say it uh, it's very much normal in at least in this community to have so many people to work at one thing. Um, as as a vocal professional, you know, as a, as a singer, I always like to just ask in general because um, you know, it is very I would argue a very like physically demanding activity in terms of you know even just doing one song because often at times it involves like multiple takes you know um, right. different like recording sessions things like that and i guess um for any maybe future singers in my audience all two of them uh <laughs> um I, I guess what what would be your like general routine in terms of like you know recovering after like a recording session well, I know that some people have like very specific routines. I am a very um, messy person in terms of routines. I'm very unable to um, actually, you know, have a routine. Um, but I do either just like drink warm tea or drink um, something that in my country is very similar to like throat coat. Uh, it's just... It's not tea, it's a syrup, but it works, you know, it works the same. Um, so if that usually is what helps me, uh, but th there are different things that help different people. It really is just about, you know, finding what works for you, being patient with yourself, being kind to yourself. Um, if something isn't working in your recording session as you thought it would, just, you know, step back, take a few moments just let it sit for a while, come back to it. Uh, it will most definitely sound better when you're not frustrated. I definitely recorded when I was frustrated and it, it just didn't work. It never works. Um, so it really is just about patience and kindness towards yourself, I would say. As kind of a related question, um, are, are you big into using like throat lozenges like Halls, Ricola, you know, things like that? Oh, no, not really. Um, we do also have, uh, well, <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm able to say it in like an English accent. We just call it Ricola here, uh, but it's, you know, same thing. I'm just unable to do it. Um, I'm not really a huge fan of any of these sort of things. We have also like um, similar things uh, that are just like um, limited to our country. And I just don't, I don't, I don't like them. They're, uh, no. <laughs> no, I mean, that that's fair. I think, um, like, for myself personally, back when I did, like, solo episodes where it's me just, you know, um, talking about, like, random topic, uh, right. I, I, I usually prefer Ricola. Mm-hmm. Um, or even, well, I don't know if you have this where you're, uh, where you're at. Have you ever heard of, like, Luddens? No. No? Okay, like, Ludens is like a throat lozenge, but it's just candy. It just tastes like candy. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, you're just selling me, like, come on, this isn't like, <laughs> this isn't like medicine or anything. Um, but, you know, in a pinch, Halls, although I have heard, or um, in my previous interview with uh, Hoots, who does, I think, uh, I can't believe I forgot, who does uh, theatrical, like, you know, singing, like musical mm -hmm. singing. Uh, she doesn't like like menthol because she she doesn't like like the numbing sensation in her throat. She oh, wants yeah. to like you know, but um no that's that's interesting to uh, kind of know. Um, so I mean, we, sorry to interrupt. No, you. you're good. We we have like a thing here that's 
very import important, very similar to you said Ricola is how you say it. I yeah, I mean, I, I think okay. that's like Ricola with like an American accent, but okay, yeah, yeah, uh, good to know. I I'm I'm still working on my accent, so good to know. Um, we have a thing that's like very similar, but a taste of black licorice, and I absolutely hate black licorice Ugh. with a passion. So uh, no, I will not be going anywhere near uh, near any of it. But I feel like. With me, it's kind of difficult because I have, I've been told that I have a very strong voice and I uh, very rarely suffer actually any kind of like loss of voice or just like my throat hurting after a session or a concert. Um, I have to actually actively be screaming uh, for me to lose my voice um, because, and this is something I do not get to flex enough, but I need to tell someone this story just because I, you know, I have been holding on onto it for so long. Um, I was uh, doing a concert this one time in high school, uh, in just like this, um, I founded this kind of like music club in high school and we would do concerts, uh, every single, uh, last Friday of the month, I believe. I'm not quite sure right now. And um, when my professor would be setting up, you know, all the little machines and just like uh, sound soundproofing everything and just, you know, doing sound check, um, all the other people that were performing would have to have their mic turned up so much more, usually just like to up to 70 or 80. And then me, I would just have to be turned up to to like 30 or something because my voice is just like really strong and really loud uh so for some reason i don't usually get like a whole lot of you know any aftermath so would you say that um well i'm wondering like like there are there i imagine there would be some drawbacks to having like a strong voice like that i mean in terms of tuning maybe because i know like i'm more soft spoken so i have to kind of like tune like, oh, yeah. granted, it's not the same as, like, singing versus talking, but I know I have to, like, tune myself up higher. Um, but I, I don't know. Um, is, is there any disadvantages, you would say, to having, like, a particularly, like, strong voice like that in any regard? Um, well, in, like, a normal life, yeah, because, like, everyone says that I'm very loud anywhere I go, but I don't really try. It's just how I talk. Um, but then... I would say that, you know, most singers usually have something very specific to them. Like they have either like a really beautifully colored voice or they can do really cool riffs. They have, uh, you know, great range. I feel like I don't really have any of that. I just, you know, I'm, I'm really very loud and I can like when I perform live, I can I can portray a lot of emotion thanks to this. But that's about it. I feel like this, however, doesn't translate as well in my current music, just because I was very limited in my um, recording options here at the dorms. I am really hoping to get to, uh, you know, soundproof my new place a little bit and actually be able to do what I usually do and not have to hold back. Um, but I would say it, it's kind of just like... Um, it it might take away from just like my voice control. I don't think my voice control is that good uh, as of now, um, and it is kind of it does get kind of frustrating. Yeah. So I guess going back to uh, specifically your YouTube content, um, I've seen that you have collaborated with a number of different artists, but you know, um, I guess. What is like your dream collab in the nerdcore scene? Like, who is the big name that you you'd be like, oh, oh man, I really want to work with them? Oof. Okay. Um. There's so many people, so I kind of just have to, you know, sort through them. Um. I mean, definitely, what is coming to mind as of now is Hala CG. I love her to death. Really. Um. It's been my dream to collab with her since I started, probably. That was, like, you know, always kind of the goal of who I really want to work with, uh, just because she's so cool. Um, but then there's definitely people, you know, 
like uh, Schwabri, also very much a dream collab. Um, Connor Quest. Uh, and then again, just really about anyone who will have me, because I love so many of uh, the Nerdcore artists, I could go on for hours. Um, it just, it always kind of uh, makes me so happy uh, when anyone comes to me with just a request for a feature. Um, probably what has made me very, like one of the happiest, I, happiest memories of a person coming to me for a feature was Maguire uh, because I have admired him for so long because his voice is that of an angel um, and so is just like his range, his voice control, everything. Um, so to be able to work with him and to be able to co-release a song with him was just like a huge milestone for me and it also brought a lot of commotion to me as an artist which was just so amazing for me. And I can never thank him enough, probably. Even outside the scope of the Nordcore music that you create through your YouTube channel, um, I saw on your, and I don't know how accurate this is, um, on your Twitter profile that you were also considering getting into the VTubing scene and that you're like a pre-debut VTuber. Um, I guess... I, I guess before I continue like prying into that, uh, how how far have you gone into that? I am right now. I'm actively looking for uh, an artist for a model and a rigger. Uh, it is um, really just in the looking stage, uh, just because I kind of want to get settled uh, into my job, you know, and everything be before I am able to uh, commit with such a big investment because good models are really big investments and that's okay uh, but i want to be really fair to the artist and i don't really want to strand uh and you know just strand anyone uh on or you know lead anyone on uh so i really just want to take my time um but i kind of feel like i've been establishing um myself as kind of like a virtual ish person i don't know i try to i try to um, put my persona anywhere I can and I've had some people commissioned to draw her but then there are people who are very kind and just draw me for free which honestly I ugh, I love those kind of people just because I don't know if you've ever been through my profile or, or on Twitter or if you any, uh, at any time um, saw a post about my art wall but I do have an art wall art wall where I post every single uh, fan art of me that was ever done and it is probably one of my favorite things um, about being a creator of anything um, because usually I struggle a lot with like feeling like I haven't really done anything meaningful you know with my music but then I kind of just like look at the wall and see all the people that took their, their free time to draw my persona and it really just reminds me that there are people who actually are inspired by me. Um, so I must have done something right. So um, I kind of try to establish myself as that, but it, it's going to take a little, a little, a little bit more, I think. Uh, I guess I'm kind of, because I mean, with, you know, streaming in general, there's like so many different like avenues you could go about it. Like, you know, some people just do like just chatting in which they just talk with their audience. Some um, obviously do the gameplay streams in which they stream themselves game, playing a game. Or in, in your case, I can imagine um, you doing like, you know, actual live performances on stream. I, I guess I guess I am kind of curious of what approach you would take. Like, would you use it as something directly tied to your music or as kind of a side thing mm -hmm. to kind of relax and just, like, engage with your audience in a more general right. sense? Okay, so just a disclaimer, I'm going to throw it out there. I feel a sneeze creeping in. So if I randomly mute myself, it's because I don't really want to, you know, uh, you to die. <laughs> so no you're um, good it would be the first sneeze i've had on this podcast <laughs> so you're good you're i will good. i will try not to uh but um with streaming it's kind of tricky right so i had like a de 
debut kind of stream a while back since then my dorm room was always full so i never really had the, the opportunity to do it again but i loved it um and we kind of just did you know just chatting but we also did some kind of um a, a, uh different activities we named all my plushies and i don't know we just talked and i played some ukulele and sung some songs and it was fun um but i would i feel like there's a lot of different things i would like to stream i i'm not really good as i said i'm not really good with like routines and doing the same thing over and over again i like versatility and variety um so i would love to stream some games i would love to uh collaborate with different streamers from the nerdcore community different vtubers that are either in the vtuber uh, in the nerdcore community or just adjacent to it still um there's just a lot of stuff that i would love to do uh i suppose that when i eventually do uh finally learn music production i would love to do uh music production on stream also um but i do have a long way to go um I would say I'm very much still in like the the baby steps stage. Um, I, I I actually apologize for this. I forgot to mention this before the interview started. But uh, before we continue further, we have a word from this episode's sponsor, Salty Llama. Um, Nina, do you have any issues with your detergent brand? Uh my detergent brands are very random, uh, so I suppose we could say yes. <laughs> well, might I recommend Salty Llama? Are you tired of lugging around heavy bottles of detergent and dealing with the mess of measuring the right amount? Introducing Salty Llama, the ultra-concentrated, hypoallergenic, and toxins-free laundry detergent strips that are revolutionizing the industry. Their eco-friendly strips are easy to use. Just toss one in with your laundry and you're good to go. With Salty Llama, you could say goodbye to harsh chemicals and hello to a cleaner, greener laundry experience. But it's not just good for the environment, it's good for you and your family. Their hyperallergenic formula is gentle and sensitive skin, making it perfect for babies, kids, and adults with allergies. Don't just take my word for it. Give Salty Llama a try and see the difference for yourself. You'll be amazed at how powerful and effective their detergent strips are. Visit www.saltyllama.com and order yours today. And don't forget to use code PODCASTPASTA at checkout for a special discount. Again, that's www.saltylama.com. The code is podcast pasta, all one word, all capitalized. I'm not sure it matters. Thank you, Salty Llama, for sponsoring this episode. Now back to the interview. Um, that was actually really impressive and oh, also you. really cool. <laughs> um, I've been doing a lot. They've been sponsoring me a lot for some weird reason. I I'm just waiting awesome. for the day they kick me out. <laughs> 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 no, that's awesome, really. Like, and it does seem quite legit. I don't know. I tried to look for like more eco-friendly ways to live, so it does seem quite legit. Yeah, yeah, no, and they've been very kind as like uh, sponsors to me. Um, but you know, I mean, to be fair, they don't really they haven't paid me yet, unfortunately. <laughs> so, um, I, no offense, okay. Salty Llama, if you're listening, still great products, <laughs> still endorse it. I'm just saying you know um oh well <laughs> right uh there is kind of an unfortunate nature to me having you on the program because uh i take it you're a fan of anime right like obviously yeah i mean i'm kind of a fan of everything you know it it's very difficult with me because like i just love everything i consume everything i'm like a black i'm like a black hole i'm like a vortex right i got you i i feel like i'm in a similar way but i i feel like i don't know with this podcast i seem to be like a vortex for a lot of anime fans and mm. i never want to like give the wrong idea that like yeah i like anime but i'm not like you know that's not like what my concentrate my work on so i never right. want to give like the wrong impression um but I guess since, you know, this is a media podcast, I, I uh, is there anything you've been watching lately? Anime or in general, I guess. Yeah, from the anime side, I, I am actually a horrible anime fan just because I used to watch a bunch of anime when I was in high school. Then I came to uni. I stopped because I didn't have time because I don't really love experiencing dub. But then if you're 
just watching with subtitles you actually have to watch and I rarely had time to actually sit down and watch something I usually just put something on in the background so I actually haven't watched any anime recently um I have a lot to catch up on let me tell you um but I have been uh watching uh The Handmaid's Tale for the past few days I started over the the weekend and then as I was you know doing all my uh backing up and at work also i would just you know let it run in the background and it's really good i really really like it i'm already at like season three or four and i'm very um very excited about it i did start it once before and i wasn't quite ready just yet i kind of needed to let it sit uh so i revisited it and it's just it's really good i recommend so i i guess um well I don't know if I, I don't know if that's the right way to phrase it, but um, because I do notice that, uh, well, like I think uh, I, I mean I, I apologize I haven't checked your uploads recently, but I know like you did no. like a recent song that was you know inspired by like Bleach, right? I, I can't remember oh, yeah. the character's name. Like you know, oh, fuck. I, I can't. Remember. It's been a long time since I've seen Bleach. Um, um, I actually, my problem is that I think in like different languages, just because, uh, you know, English isn't my first language. So I could, you know, uh, say her name as I would read it in my own language, but then it, I would probably just butcher it. So, um, I suppose if I'm going to try to mimic an American accent, it would just be Yorichi. I'm not sure. I don't want to mess it up. So yes, yes, that's right. Yeah. Yorichi. Um, but I, I guess so. Is a lot of your music kind of um? Well, I, I guess I'm kind of curious about like the process. So is it like you have like anime that you've watched or that you know just shows in general you watch and then that inspires you to do the song, or is it sometimes like the opposite where you're you know um you want to do a song and you've been like kind of curious to check out like a show so you kind of um compose the song and then maybe tie it to the show i don't know if I'm, if that like kind of makes sense like kind of like the opposite oh, no it makes sense yeah. that so i, I uh, guess how do you like find the inspiration for or like kind of guide your creative process in terms of relating it to the i guess kind of to what you've watched or what you've experienced it's a little bit of both uh just because it depends you know like when it comes to features i usually um pick up anything that is you know thrown in my direction uh even if i haven't seen the anime i just do my own research uh sometimes i I watch it if i have time sometimes i don't um but when it comes to my own music i try to um focus on things that i have seen unless i have got really inspired by something very much you know just like in real life kind of experience and I want to relate it to something um, which is definitely going to be the case for at least one of my future app uh, uploads because I do have one very specific upload that I don't really um, I wasn't really sure what to connect it to I'm still kind of on the edge about this Um, so we will see what it actually um, ends up being Um, but usually I do come from like the place the process is kind of just like, okay, I want to make a song that portrays this emotion, or I want to make a song in this genre. So I kind of just like try to brainstorm, you know, what reminds me of this topic or this genre, what kind of either what show, what anime, uh, what story, what character. So, and then I kind of just, you know, select what I feel fits best. And I try to uh, really just like relate to whatever I I chose and then we kind of see where where that takes us I suppose right no that yeah that um, definitely I think makes sense um, but you have been kind of hinting at, at least in your last answer you kind of hinted at like future content for your channel so um, I guess while you're here, uh, yeah, what, what is the future of the channel? Like, what do you have in the works? Like even like short term or even like in the, like lo- in the long term, like what, what can we be expecting from Nina Hope? Right. So 
Um, I'm definitely thinking of starting a side channel just for the podcast. Not quite sure if I'm going to re-upload everything there or if I'm just going to start releasing new content there just yet. That's still something I have to think about. But when it comes to music, there's a lot that I'm working on at once. I'm usually always working on features. Uh, I am doing that even now. I was just recording before we started. Um, but there are a few songs that I am focusing on as of now. Um, I just ran a poll the other day to ask my audience on Twitter uh, what is it that they would prefer to come out first. And they chose um, Lo-Fi. So I'm kind of going to be focusing on this Lo-Fi song for, for a bit uh, after I finally move out. Um, but I also have this really, really, really cool, like, bass-heavy ADM, uh, sorry, EDM, English, I hate it, uh, EDM song, uh, in the works, uh, that's not gonna be completely, like, a specific anime-related, it's, uh, this is really cool, so I'm actually gonna share it, because I've been really passionate about this project, um, it's gonna portray, uh, the feeling of an anime character, uh, whatever if it's a woman man and be doesn't matter just like an anime character that is perpetually being sexualized called the waifu or you know a hus husbando is what how you say it in in with an american accent i don't know um so it kind of is supposed to portray the emotion of a character that is really fed up with being perpetually sexualized and just like being um, people being very gross about them. Um, and it, I would say it has like, you know, like TikTok success potential if I, if I play my cards right. But for that, I actually really just have to, you know, settle down and actually, um, actually do a lot of prep. So, uh, that's something that's definitely coming very soon, hopefully. Well, we'll all definitely be looking forward to, um, that in the in the future and the funny thing is i actually did vote in that poll i also voted for lo-fi oh, really? so i'm glad I that won so surprised. i was so surprised i honestly i was honestly expecting expecting the edm to win uh so when it was the lo-fi which is the song that i really wasn't focusing on as much because i didn't expect this to happen i was just super uh both excited and surprised but i'm very excited i've been dying to work on some more lo-fi so really happy absolutely i mean lo-fi is like you know um it's all the rage right like as opposed to edm yeah. which kind of had its time like i would say like mid to late 2000s oh yeah give or take so yeah but either way yeah i'm definitely looking forward to um that um i guess how would i word this uh so I guess with your, so you do plan on, because I think, uh, and I, I apologize if I don't have the timeline for this, like, right. Um, it, has it been a little while since you've actually done like a, like a podcast episode? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's been a while. So I, I guess in a broader sense, because yours is in a similar fashion to mine, but also kind of different because I think yours is more specifically conversational i mean it's you know it's a matter i guess of like subjective nuance or whatever but um i i guess you know as a fellow podcaster i'm curious what um what you're planning for that well um as uh, i plan my return for the podcast i definitely do have some people that i have already reached out to with and the request to uh, be guests on the podcast. I still have a very, very, very many different nerdcore artists I would love to uh, interview. Um, but I kind of just, you know, want to get to um, the, back to like the the primary roots of why I started the podcast, which was for me to just rant about things that I was um, currently hyper fixated on. Um, so I kind of just, you know, want to get back to that maybe eventually even get guests to talk about those things, uh, whether it be books, uh, games, whatever. 
um, there's always something that I hyperfixate on. So I really, uh, I really definitely want to kind of tap into that a little more again because I miss it. You know, I mi I miss talking. I haven't you know talked and rambled for a long time. So I think you can see that. I feel like I talk a whole lot right now. <laughs> no, I mean it's good. It's the it's the whole point of <laughs> it's the whole point of the show. Um, I guess to kind of like to harken back a, a little while because it, it was in my head uh you said a little while back that when you're watching anime you're not a big fan of dubs right oh yeah um i would say it's kind of just like very specific bias because here in my country every single thing that's aired on tv is dubbed and uh also most things that go into the theater also get dubbed uh unless you catch it really early like when it when it's released you can catch it for like i don't know um a few weeks when it's just with subtitles which is what i prefer but the dub here really isn't always great i recently saw uh puss in boots uh the second movie uh dubbed in theaters and it was one of the very few uh, dubs I actually enjoyed uh, because since it's a you know it's a it's animated so people assume it's a children's movie so then it like immediately gets dubbed uh, but I really enjoyed it because it was creatively done very very interestingly I love the direction that 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 they took with it uh, but usually I just don't enjoy it I feel like um, the English uh, VA scene However, it could be much different. I have been told by many people that uh, many different shows have great dub. I just cannot, you know, bring myself to it. It's just a very, very specific bias that I have. Mm. No, I get you. I get you. Um, because at, at least I, I guess I could give you a little perspective on like English dubbing is that, you know, um, yeah, I'd say it has definitely gotten a lot better. Well, I say that with a caveat. It has definitely got a lot better since, like, definitely the 90s or so, mm. where, um, you know, sometimes it's just, like, depicts, like, oh, hey, you're a localizer? Guess what? Now you're, now you're a voice actor. Oh, you yeah. know, and um, obviously there has been more of a, especially, like, as work has been kind of centralized into, like, distribution through Crunchyroll, through, uh, you know, other different, um, you know, channels like that, there's been a unified effort to, like, you know, dub work not only more professionally but quicker. Uh, but I think the issue that I have is that you know they usually pull like from a hand few of like, and I don't know if this is similar to where you're where you're from. Um, that they pull from like a hand few like different voice actors, so you hear like repeating voices. Oh yeah. Which like if you're a casual viewer, it's fine because you know you know you only watch like one or two anime and you might not even notice it but like if you watch enough you tell right away oh this is x person or this is y person um and i and i mean like yeah again that's i guess better than the past but i don't know i think like it is definitely an industry that can like open up more um oh, yeah no except definitely. for netflix netflix just has terrible dubbing with um not not so much their animated shows, but like their because you know obviously Netflix tries to pull in from like a lot of different like media companies. So you have like live oh, yeah. action shows from. Like, you can Japan. also you can also find Slovak and Czech movies uh, on Netflix with dub. Uh, I have not dared to watch them uh, because I feel like it would be a blasphemy, but you definitely can. <laughs> right, right, and they're and they're probably dubbed in English badly. Because oh, yeah. they have like their own weird like dubbing team, but like they just they were committed to hiring like the worst people <laughs> you can imagine for their dubs. So like I don't know, it, it is I think improving, but I guess part of the reason why um I want to kind of veer in this conversation is I know a lot of people or a lot of people that do like singing and vocal work in general also kind of get into voice acting and I hate asking this because it's like asking a cook if they can farm, right? But uh, has that been has that been something that's interested you, like maybe getting into like 
voice dubbing yourself either like professionally or even like in a fan capacity? Yeah, I have done uh, a few uh, gigs here in my country for this group of people who basically on their own, they dub games, uh, which is cool because there is never a localization for my language. Usually it's just Czech. Um, but then again, as a translation and interpreting student, it's very difficult for me to get a script and see that it's really badly translated. Uh, because that's usually what my problem with dub is, is just a horrible translation. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, so that's kind of just like where the challenge for me is. But I'm, I, I'm not disinterested in, in voice acting just because I have taken acting classes for like seven years or eight years. Um, I am interested in the, you know, any form of acting I can do. Um, I just really, um, take great care in how something is translated because it's very important to me that, um, everything that is important stays where it should be. Uh, and it oftentimes, oftentimes happens that, uh, that's not the case. So. Right, and uh, obviously because it comes like with its own difficulties of like translating very specific like cultural references. And oh like yeah, that. yeah. Oh yeah. There, there's a lot of aspects to, to translation, and while many people feel like, oh, it's just you know, it's just translating. You don't need a degree for that. I mean, you don't. But I am almost certain that most of you know, um, the things that I, I. Uh, get my hands on that I'm supposed to voice act for, uh, I could probably help a lot just with my knowledge of how things should be translated for them to sound better in a specific language. So um, it just, it's, it's, a, it's difficult. It's difficult. Right. No, I, yeah, I get you. Um, so I guess, um, hmm. Okay. No, it's just, uh, I, I wonder if, um, I, I, I apologize if I'm misremembering this, but you also do like drawn work, right? A little bit. Yeah. I, oh, a little bit. Right. I, I, I took art class for seven years, <laughs> but like then for a very long period of time, I didn't draw. And then suddenly I started drawing because I needed to bring a character from my story to life somehow. Um, but then I kind of didn't have time. So it's kind of just, uh, everything with me is kind of very frantic. You know, I, I pick it up, then I put it on hold, then I pick it up again. Uh, but I do draw a little bit. Uh, I'm not very good at it, I don't think. And you, you, you were the one that initially came up with, um, your, the inspiration for like your, your like uh, persona that you use now, right? Oh yeah. Well, yeah. the very first inspiration came from just a very simple uh, big crew image. I don't quite remember uh, which one that was, uh, but I remember uh, Connor quests complimenting me on it, and it just it just changed my entire world at that moment. I was just so happy, and then I got commi I got a commission from a very talented Slovak artists. Their, uh, their name is Wormbus. You can find them on Instagram. Um, and they do amazing art. Uh, and they were having like, they were running like really, really cheap commissions. So I just uh, commissioned them to uh, recreate uh, what uh, I made in the Picrew, but like in their own style. And it was really, really nice. And then I kind of just really wanted something that was my own, so I uh, made some really shitty drawings uh, to design uh, my, you know, outfit, just like general look. And uh, Afro Legacy, my very dear friend, uh, was actually very kind, and he uh, commissioned uh, Cribbles McJiggles uh, for... Um, one of probably what my most well-known art uh 
of well art of my my persona and that's basically how she was born into all her beauty that she is today and um granted i don't know if this is something that you have um in your mind right now or if it's potentially something uh in the future but is there any type of um iterations that you see making with your persona design like especially as you get into like v2 being and just you know expanding out your not to sound like a tool but like your brand you know no i get it i mean i have been thinking about it but i don't see like a whole lot of uh space for change just because i'm very content with what i have right now um i did have like a small thing added to some of my current drawings um some of which is for example just like earrings which i think are really cute uh but then again um i i'm always very um when i talk to any artists for any commission i always sell them you know you're the artist you have complete um freedom of whatever creativity you have um and so far everyone that has drawn my persona when i was commissioning them was like i had so much fun drawing this your design is so fun etc and oftentimes i feel like my design can be a little boring because a lot of vtubers have like really 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 intricate and cool outfits and you know i'm just a girl in jeans um and i kind of sometimes i feel like maybe i should do something a little more fancy but then again i don't really feel like that it expresses uh who i am completely um so i think i will just continue admiring all those vtubers uh from afar uh while not actively participating in wearing really beautiful robes even though i really want to but we don't really have, you know, money on those kind of toggles, so. <laughs> no, that's fair, yeah. Um, I guess we are approaching the hour mark. Uh, let me ask you, I guess, one question, because it's rare that I get a talk from anyone from Slovenia. Am I saying that right? Uh, I apologize. Uh, no, nope, that's Slovakia. Slovakia, uh, Slovenia, oh God, Slovenia is a completely different country. Thinking? Wow. <laughs> it's okay. It's uh, okay. It's okay. You're not the first person in the world to get this wrong, and you're definitely not the last, trust me. Well, again, I, I do apologize. But um, I guess what... what um, I mean, again, I don't know how what the like broader media scene is in you know your, your country, uh, but is there any work from, you know... Um, is there any work from your country that you would just like recommend in general that like you're a big fan of or just you know broadly oh um i'm trying to think i don't really like i don't uh usually consume a whole lot of media from here but there are, are some really cool artists um whose names i would have to say in slovak and nobody would understand them so if you want, I can give you them after and you can just put them in your description or something. Uh, but there are some really, really, really cool artists here that I enjoy. Um, <clears throat> that's mostly because I have been um, brought, brought up on music from my country or from Czech Republic. Uh, just because, you know, the whole like uh, uh, Czechoslovakia thing and then breaking up but you know it's still kind of there's still like this feeling of like brotherhood I suppose uh, between those two countries so um, there's just like a lot of music from Czech Republic and Slovakia that I'm very sentimental about I just listened to um, uh, this song it's uh, like a hip hop song from I don't know like 2010, 2012 I don't know uh, and I was, you know, I was a very young teenager back then, and I completely forgot about this song, but it's, uh, um, it's one of the very few contacts with hip hop I had as, as a kid. Um, it's from this guy, Ben, I, I'm going to have to say it with my natural accent, I'm sorry. Uh, but, uh, his name is Ben Cristobal. Uh, he is a, uh, black Czech artist and he is 
Um, well, I don't really know what he does now, but I was a big fan when I was 12. I can tell you that much. And it's a very silly, silly song uh, about, you know, just like getting them girls. And it's just it's it's very funny listening to listening to it now. But uh, it there there's a sentimental kind of value to it, and there I have like a lot of artists who I just you know have very much this sentimental value uh, to. Um, so I can just you know give you a few names uh, to spare us all the misery of me having to pronounce their names. Oh well, yeah, I, I was just I was just curious on my end, you know, because. Um... I know well, yeah, for I like me, I, I just have like a broader bias towards like American oh, yeah. media because obviously oh, yeah. due to like proximity. Oh, but, yeah. There um, are some really good artists. I can definitely, I can, I mean, I can definitely recommend uh, this guy. His name is Tomasz Klus. Um, he makes really beautiful music and he has a song that's called Nina. So, you know, uh, it's a really good song. Listen to it. It's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to um, to that uh but we are a little bit past the hour mark um to anyone listening if you want to support the podcast you could do so in a number of different ways i have a patreon account for monthly donations uh three different tiers i think like the the middle and like the higher tier you get like some merch uh, exclusive to patreon um but if you don't want to be committed to like the monthly donation model, I also have a Ko-Fi. Ko-Fi also lets you do monthly, but um, I would recommend that. I would recommend monthly more for Patreon because again, I'd like the exclusive gear, um, the exclusive merch. Uh, and on Patreon, uh, across all the tiers, you get your name read aloud in the credits, but I don't have any Patreon supporters, so the section is just blank. Um, I also have a merch store, so if you want to buy uh, cool merch, um, a lot of it with designs uh, created by uh, a collaborator of the podcast, uh, George Isaac of Nocturnal Essent. Uh, all this you can find linked on my uh, Twitter account, at Podcasting Pasta. Again, that's at Podcasting Pasta, all one word. Everything's lowercase. I'm not sure that matters for Twitter. You'll find it as like a link tree in the profile section. Uh, Nina, thank you so much for uh, joining us. If you want to shout out where people can find you, any parting words, go ahead. Well, thank you for having me, first and foremost. It was really fun. Um, and um, I don't know, you guys can find me basically anywhere. You can find me on Twitter at Just Nina Hope, on Instagram on Just Nina Hope, on YouTube as Nina Hope, same as on Spotify. Um, I have a bunch of stuff. I do have exclusive merch i do have a patreon although i there's not really much there so you know you might want to you might want to wait a little bit until it actually becomes a little more crowded i do have ko-fi also uh but mostly you know i just want to hang out if you want to get to know me just jump to my twitter we can talk have a great time spend some spend some time together you know just chill Okay, and uh, once again, thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Salty Llama, for uh, sponsoring today's episode and the previous episodes. And um, yes, stay safe, stay healthy, um, and take care.